Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Inkscape 1.2 was just released. Now Inkscape is an open source vector graphics based application. If you don't know what that means, basically instead of drawing with pixels like a traditional raster application, you instead draw with shapes. Notice this mirror over here and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select components of it and see the shading on top of it. That is a shape. All of these things are composed shapes drawn on top of each other. And the nice thing about this approach to graphics is they scale amazingly. It's mathematical. So when you zoom in on something, it doesn't get jaggy. When you zoom out, it doesn't change. So that's the, the really nice thing about vector graphics. Everything is drawn mathematically. Now, what can we expect in Inkscape 1.2? Well, a big area of improvement here is the addition of, uh, or improvements to the user interface. One thing that I think game developers particularly are going to really appreciate are the new palette controls. You'll see this bar across the bottom for selecting the color to draw with. Well, now we have a couple of new options here. So for example, I can come down, click this little menu right here, and we actually see a preview of the various different palettes. Um, palettes that are available. So if we want to switch over to a palette, uh, we can see it, a quick preview of it over here. Now I'm going to try and get back to whichever one I started with because I'm going to need to have lots of colors to showcase the next thing. All right, so there we go. All right, so this palette has a number of different options available to it. Another thing we can do now is come down here, go to configure, and we can now have multiple rows of palette selection. That is a very nice update and I very much appreciate this. Another area, and this is very important when you are drawing mathematically, is the ability to snap things. So if I wanna snap this shape over that shape, etc., cetera, uh, there are improvements to the snapping menu that is available over here. So you see now this guy here, there's this little snap on and off. Now, by the way, it's very difficult to tell when it's snapped versus not snapped in the dark menu. In my opinion, the coloration the contrast isn't amazing, but you see here, we got this little drop down right here and we can control all the various different snapping options. That is definitely a nice little improvement as well. And in terms of the user interface itself, we've got another improvement here in that over here, we now have all of these various different settings for uh, aligning and, and shaping objects in the scene. They've all been collapsed into one panel, the align and distribute panel. So if you wanna align things left, right, so on, they're all available here under align, grid alignment and circuit alignment all available in this one panel together. That is definitely a nice improvement as well. And another thing that they've added, and this one is of very little use to game developers, but for people using Inkscape for other reasons, especially for document creation, you may enjoy this one. This is a new menu option down here for creating multi-page documents. So you see here, we have a single page document so far. And what I can do is I can pick a second page of a size, well, probably not that size. Uh, so let's say second page like this, and we can create another one and another one. And then you can navigate between them using these buttons right here. Now I, I do find it's a little random what we actually get. So there we see our three different pages. I don't know why it took part of it into the other page like this, but it, it did, that's, that's the default behavior. I don't understand it, but you can see how you can easily start creating multi-page documents. This is definitely useful if you're using Inkscape to create something like PDF files. Um, there's a number of other improvements to the tooling. We're gonna go check that out in the release notes in just a second. Again, Inkscape is an open source project, so this is completely free. Uh, you can download the source code if you so wish. It is hosted on GitLab, I believe it is. So let's head on over uh, to the website and learn a bit more about this. So if you want to go ahead and download Inkscape, it is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux at inkscape.org. Um, again, just released yesterday in terms of the Inkscape 1.2. What is new in this particular release? Well, we'll just do the top level highlight here. Uh, if you watched my video about a month and a half back, we, we covered this in a little bit more depth, but uh, it's now basically ready for production in formal version, not beta version. So the first thing we've got here, we covered that briefly there, is the page tool for creating multiple page documents. Uh, you can now edit markers uh, and dash patterns. This is kind of cool. So you can actually have it so that you can have like arrowheads at the end of your line, etc. Layer and object menus were merged together on canvas alignment snapping and snap settings redesigned. Uh, we saw that uh, this guy right up here is the new snap settings. Definitely an improvement in that regard. Uh, you can import SVGs from Open Clip Art, Wikimedia Commons, and other online sources. Uh, the export dialog was uh, updated as well. So there's more control here. So when you do an export now, uh, you've got additional controls. Everything is put together here. You can select uh, what to export and so on. Uh, so definitely a nice move there. Uh, selectable objects origin for numerical scaling and moving. We'll, we'll look at that one in just a second. Uh, all 
all alignment options were put together into that single spot. Again, that is now available in Align and Distribute. So everything is in the same location for you. Uh, gradient editing in the fill and stroke dialog. Uh, it's inline gradients, basically. Uh, gradients dithering options available now. SVG font editor was updated. Uh, flowing text around shapes and text padding. Uh, convenient Boolean options for splitting paths. Uh, configurable toolbar, continuous icon scaling, and many more customization options. Performance improvements for many parts of the interface. Unfortunately, this is still my biggest gripe. The performance it doesn't hold a candle to Affinity Designer, which is what I use regularly. And I would definitely like to see some performance updates. Now, I do believe that on um, Linux, it it's performs much better. But I also got to tell you, on Mac OS, on an M1 Mac, it performs abysmally. Uh, so I definitely would like to see some more drawing level performance improvements. If you're on a non-Linux platform, you're probably in the same boat as I am. A number of other improvements, the user interface, crash fixes, and so on more. Uh, so again, we've got the new palette, color palette tools, the ability to show multiple roles. Uh, you can change the palette tile sizes and so on. I definitely appreciate that. This is another nice little user interface improvement is context menus. If you right click something and there's the menu item isn't applicable to whatever you're clicking, it isn't shown. Definitely an improvement there. Uh, we got improvements to the uh, dithering algorithms. Um, Let's see what else is of some relevance here. Again, multiple page, the multiple page um, controls that are in there now. Uh, the snapping popover is definitely a nice new feature. So you can see the various different snap changes, the way that you can snap things in, uh, relative to other items. Um, yeah, there, there's basically quite a bit in this particular release. I'm going to, of course, have the release notes down below if you want to go ahead and get into more detail. Again, this is that new change to the origin. So you can um, select things relative to an origin, pick the double arrow down in the bottom corner, and then all of your transforms will happen relative to that particular space. Uh, nice there. Some improvements to the text tools, uh, pathing tools, dialogues changing uh, and improvements in that regard. Uh, the exporting again uh, really kind of changed the, the UI for the exporting process. And this is another neat one is you can now actually do batch exports, uh, which is quite neat if you've got, so as you see, an icon set and you want to split that out into a bunch of different icons, you could do it all in one single export. So definitely some improvements there. Uh, the fill and stroke dialogue's got improvements. There's color selector uh, changes there. Uh, again, the gradient editor is back, so you can have multiple different stops along the gradient for creating. Uh, it's like we're going back in time to GeoCities. Uh, but there's this inline gradier ed gradient editor tool that's in there now, which is definitely nice. Uh, the markers uh, improvements in general, including the ability to edit the selected marker size, distance from the line, and orientation. Um, Custom dash patterns, including where you can select uh, arrowheads on each end of a line if you so wish, and so on. There is quite a bit in this particular release. Uh, I do recommend if you are an, um, an Inkscape user to go ahead and check it out. If you have not found a vector graphics tool that is ideal for you, uh, Inkscape is definitely one to consider. Again, it is open source and free, uh, available at inkscape.org. That was Inkscape 1.2 that was just released. A lot of just generalized UI improvements, which I appreciate. Um, and yeah, the only thing I really, really call for here, because one of my, I had two complaints with Inkscape in the past. The user interface was ugh to me, uh, and the um, the performance was subpar, especially on Windows platforms. Now, the fact that we've gotten a, a lot of user interface improvements, I definitely like to see those improvements there. Now, I just want to see uh, you know GPU accelerated drawing panel or something to that effect to get to get this performance aspect of using Inkscape better. Like this is this is just. It, it's usable. It's just at times, like, there you see, it's just a little painful, especially this is a beefy machine this is running on, and it's slow on this end. Now, again, I do believe in the Linux world, this isn't really as much of an issue, but on Windows, and especially on M1 Mac, the performance definitely needs an upgrade. But otherwise, some really nice improvements to the user interface overall. I really like the new palette controls. I really like the new snapping controls. I like the consolidation of things into logical menus. I like the changes to context menus. Uh, so definitely some nice stuff in this release. And if you're an Inkscape user, you have to be happy. And if you're not, hey, maybe it's time to check it out, inkscape.org. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.